Okay, so what I want to do, I want to get this model into Mari and back. Okay, and do some textures. First thing, let's, uh, we don't have any UVs laid out on this, so we're going to do the Bob UV trick. If I go in here and I do a quick, oh, freaking mesh display. If I go in here, camera based, boom, camera based UVs. And I could do some special things to this, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to do this super fast. I'm going to have a little bit of stretching. If I use my favorite little unfold here with the default settings, right? Reset settings, boop, apply and close. Boom, it's done that. Um, and then I'm going to take this thing. I got to make sure that under Windows Settings Preferences, Plugin Manager, that OBJ export is on. Okay, good. Boop. Now we can go File, Export Selection. And I don't know what I'm in here. Some kind of Eva Green thing. Okay, great. Whatever. We're just going to call this Iron Man. But we're going to make him out of wood. Whatever. Who cares? Okay, so I've got this thing out as an OBJ. Actually, just hold on a second, I was smoking crack. I wasn't paying attention. When I said export selection, I did do an OBJ. Okay, good. So, let's go and open up Mari. So I've got Mari open already. And here in projects, this is the confusing part, okay? Opening a scene is confusing. And closing a scene can be confusing. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit new. And you want, I was playing around here, I'm gonna discard that. You're gonna get a big window like this. You can name this, whatever you wanna call it, test. Okay, um, right here for geometry. You can see I already got some geometry in here, but I'm going to go looking for my piece. And where the hell did I just put this? Uh, just hold on a second. I'm going to pause. Okay, so I found it. Um, so I got it there. Open. Great. Um, I don't need to worry about these things so much. I don't need to worry about these things so much. Sometimes it wants a texture path here, so you might have to go and set up a folder or something so it can kind of cache information. Stop doing that. My rabbit is getting bored in his cage. Um, okay, so back over here on Mari. Mari has loaded it up. Um, maybe uh, one other thing I should have done here is I potentially should have... This is driving me nuts. Cut that out. <laughs> okay, I want to smooth it. <laughs> if I go over here to objects, uh, you can right-click and quickly hit it with subdivide. This is a Mari 3 thing. You can't do this in Mari 2.6. Okay, I just got to take that away. Get that out, you're driving me crazy. Okay, you. Okay, get out of my way, out of my way, out of my way. Okay, back, 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 back. Okay, so let's get rid of this. <clears throat> so navigating, you're holding down Alt for rotating around. Alt, left click, middle click, and right click. Those zoom, move things around. Next thing I want to do, let's take a look at ortho here. In ortho, you can see that I've got my UVs laid out for me over here. And now, what I can do, I can do all sorts of things when I'm here in Mari land. Um, first thing I might want to do is set up a new uh, shader. And with Mari 3.5, or with 3, I can go in here to set up a V-Ray material. Next thing I gotta do, over here in channels, uh, they give you a default diffuse channel, but that's something funky about it. Um, uh, you can create new channels here, or what I like to do is go to the fast channel, or quick channel here, boop, hit quick channel, and you get a quick channel. And this one's gray, this one's white, that one's black. That's it. And you can dictate their size right here. And I'm just gonna take this diffuse, and when you take the diffuse, you can just hit delete on the keyboard and it goes away, and we have quick channel. And again, you can rename this thing, give it a name. You could call this one, Diffuse. Uh oh, damn you to hell. Diffuse. Crap you. Okay, well, there, there. And now I'm going to go zipping back here to shaders and I want to hook that up to potentially my uh, shader here. And if I just kind of click on this button, I can pick the diffuse channel. I can create a bunch of different channels if I want to. Now, when I'm over here, if I want to uh, put textures down, I go over to this button here. That's your paint tool. That's really weird for a paint tool. And, oh, I'm not getting nothing. Why not? Okay, I'm gonna go over here to my select tool. Make sure I'm selecting things. There, I've selected my object. Then I can go back here to my paint tool. And you can see that I'm painting. Now, currently, the paint is sitting in something called the paint buffer. 
Okay, if I go over here, I can see that I am in my layers section. And why is that hidden from me? I guess I've crunched it up too much over here or something. Anyway, <clears throat> um, I'm in painting, projection, this thing's hidden here, and I guess I got my layers over here. Okay, fine. Uh, let's see if I can move this puppy down, move it down. Uh, of course, it doesn't want to move down right now. Whatever. Okay. <clears throat> um, actually, I'm just going to move this thing off so I got a bit more visual real estate that I can show things with, and I don't need that to be seen there. And you can kind of undock and dock things. As a matter of fact, you're using dual monitors. It's better because you can just move everything over there and you got a big screen. By the way, with a frame or with a paint buffer, you can see that it is um, working in both the ortho UV and in the perspective view here, or my actually my ortho view, and this is my UV view. And right now my projections are set up so that, uh, let's see, it's clear behavior, or bake behavior is on clear only, and I'm on selected only right now, so only selected objects will be baked onto, and only the front, not through. You've got all these sorts of masks down in here you can play with in the projection section. Okay, now what I want to do <clears throat> is just bake one down. And if I go in here and I do some rubbing on here, you've got paint tool, what, erase, I can erase things. Okay, let's just bake it. I'm going to hit B on the keyboard, B for bake, and it bakes it down and that's now locked on here and it no longer swims across my surface. Okay, uh, let's go and switch a color. Uh, let's put something obnoxious on like this. And actually, maybe I'm going to go over here, and when I'm doing this, how about I go over to the shelf, and I pick a new brush. And I think the these kind of organic brushes, you can make your own. Storm Cloud is so nice. Okay, so i got my Storm Cloud brush. And actually, I'm still on eraser. i got to switch back over here to this. Storm Cloud. And it's taking a second. Uh-oh. I'm not going to crash, am I? There we go. Picked up. Okay, and Storm Cloud is doing this nice little sweeping behavior on here. If you want to fine tune the brush, if you right click, you go into the brush editor, this little thing pops up, and oh, you bastard! That wasn't what I meant it to do. Um, you can come in here and start playing around with the brush itself. All I did was right click on this bar to get to that. Okay, and uh, maybe this time around I might want to have that stuff underneath exposed or something like that. I'm not sure. So it's probably a good idea in the layers here that I go and I put this on another layer when I bake it. I'm going to hit B for bake. Okay, great. And then you'll notice that when I do that, I can't erase. Okay. But if I'm back here on the paintbrush, if you want to erase stuff that's on a layer, you have to switch your painting mode to clear. And then you can go and do some clear painting here in the frame buffer. And maybe that wasn't very nice. Let's go and undo that. Let's go make the brush smaller. Arr. Okay, and then I can come in here and I can start to erase off that layer. And then you'll see that that's swimming in the paint buffer. And I hit B and I've successfully erased from that layer. This is something that really troubled me and it's kind of weird to have to deal with. Okay, what else can we do? So I was looking at the brushes and so I was in the shaders. Image manager. So here's the other big cool thing you can do, Amari. You can. Um, get yourself some textures. And I'm just going to go in here and I'll find, uh, what did I put something into the downloads already? I'm just going to drag it and drop it from my Explorer over to here. And if I drag it and I drop it from there to there, great. And how what are we at? Nine minutes? Okay, so in here, if I use, con uh, right now there's an image in my paint buffer. If I hold down control, I can rotate. When I hold down control and I, and I left click. And when I hold down shift and I left click, I can move it around. If I hold down control and shift together, I can zoom in and out. Then I'm on this paint through brush. I can paint through onto this perfectly. Oh, bastard, I forgot that I'm on clear. Let's go back to normal. Okay, so now when I'm doing normal, I can paint right through. And you're seeing it's updating on the other viewport as well. Okay, maybe I only really wanted it to paint onto the front, onto the front face mask, right? You can see it doing all these things here. Okay, you get kind of confused with your uh, hotkeys and stuff like that when you're doing this, I find. You get used to it and then everything's cool. But right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my select tool, and I'm going to go to my uh, select right over here. There's select faces. If I grab a face like this, I can select one face to paint on. Depending upon the filter that I've got up top here, if I put it on to select all, when I go and I click again, it's going to select <laughs> that whole piece there. Okay, cool. So let's go back to the paint through, 
And now when I'm painting through, it's only going to paint onto what I wanted. Maybe I want to line this up so that it's got a... Like right now, the angle's all kind of funny, right? If I hit one, it goes to the side. Two, three, four, five. Oh, there it is. That one. That was five. The hotkey of five. Boop. Okay, now if I hold down Alt and I scale it in, I can do this. And then I can go and paint through. And I'm making a really, really stupid, stupid thing. But whatever, just to explain how this works. And if I hit B, then it's baked on. I should have put that onto another layer, but whatever, I didn't. So there you have it. I'm just going to switch back to different painting modes. There's a grid that shows up. I still haven't figured out how to turn that off. That drives me kind of a bit nuts. Um, I thought I'd have to set up separate, separate UDEMs. But we'll say this is good for now. Um, just trying to think if there's any other things you really want to know right now. Okay. To get the texture out, if I'm here in the layer editor, fast way to do it. Okay, I can go over and when I grab the layers, I can right click and I can export flattened, all layers flattened. And because I'm only using a simple zero to one area here, this is going to be nice and simple and I can go out with my UDEMs and da 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 da, see users, wherever I want to go. And um, I can give myself a name like Iron Plank. Okay, great. And I'll put this one, I guess, go to users, Bob, great. Export all images, export all patches, boop. And, okay. And what was I smoking over here? Did I miss something? SRGB be enabled, only this layer. Um, and why is this giving me problems? Okay, got to pause for a sec. Okay, looks like I was an idiot. I forgot to put in the tiff at the end. Anyway, if um, I take a look at this thing, and where did I put it? C, users. Oh, I freaking hate this. Uh, I should have put it someplace really fast so I could get at. And there it is. If I go back to Maya, boop, here we go. And I was testing that out here. If I go in and I was to, uh, let's go to my hypershade. Come on, go quicker. And then I can just drag this thing in. Boop, there it is. And if I hook that up to my, uh, let's see, I got, if let's go in here and assign existing material, I'll throw on a V-Ray material. So I got this V-Ray material over here. And if I go over and I it'll click, hook that up to diffuse color, boom, that texture that I put on is here. If I hit six, okay, and it's giving me a really shitty readout. That's because my render is the viewport too. If I switch to my other viewport, great. And there you have it. I've gone and done simple, simple. If I've got something a bit more complicated, or actually, let's do, before I do complicated, let's just point out that um, if I want to save this, if I go over to the project section, you're going to see that, like, or even I go to file, and there's no real save. There's save. Okay, I saved it. But I want to be able to get that file, and you can't really get it too easily. What you've got to do is you've got to go in and hit this. This is going to close the current project. Okay, and mysteriously it closes behind you. There's the test over here. Then, once you've closed it, you can archive it. And when I archive... Why am I not getting anything? You bastard. Oh, it's because I forgot I have to select it after I've saved it. Then I can archive it. Okay, smoking crack again. Test, and there I can go to my C drive. Great, and I'll hit save. And I can save different versions. So if I click that again and I archived it again, now I can do like a test zero two, okay? And that way I can take this whole thing um, to an, you know another computer and work on it. Okay, one other thing to notice is if I have something with maybe multiple UDEMs, okay? And I'm trying to do this all under 15 minutes. Multiple UDEMs, whoop. If you don't know what a UDEM is, you have to look it up. Okay, there they all are. There's all my UDEMs, my little separate patches. You'll notice that if I was if I was selecting, you can select your different patches to paint on and stuff like that. But actually what I want is the whole object. Um, and I can paint and I can do anything I want to this thing. Uh, let's just go and do some random thing. Okay, and then I'll hit B. Now, if I want to get these out, I'm getting more UDEMs in here. Doing this thing with the layers down here, the layer uh, manager, and then exporting out, can, and then importing into Maya can be a real pain in the ass. That's why they've got Python examples export to Maya. 
there's one little funny thing, unless you're really good with writing out these things, which I hate typing, so that could be a pain in the ass, but I go and I hit base, go over there, great, and then I can hit OK and export it out. And then when I import it into Maya, I can find it in the hypershade. But uh, I might make another video on this one later on. Um, so I'm going to stop right there. That's my, that's Mari in a nutshell, really, really super fast. And then after that, that gets you up and running, and then you can start playing with it. Anyway, stop.